Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Tuesday Live. Oh, wow, we've got tons of joiners right away. So thank you all for joining. I am so excited for today's guest, Kara Golden. She is the founder of Hint um, and also the author of Undaunted, which we're going to get into uh, a lot today. So please, if you're just tuning in, go ahead and like this post, share this post so that more people can see it. Don't forget to drop a comment where you're tuning in from. I'm going to be doing some shout outs before we get going here with Miss Kara. So um, be sure to like this, comment where you're tuning in from, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Today with Shay. <laughs> All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back again. You can't get rid of me, haters. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so life has been pretty great. Um, I won't lie. There's a lot of great things shifting in the business world right now. So I'm really looking forward to speaking with Kara because she has a ton of experience in entrepreneurship and um, and and all that great stuff. So please. If you're just seeing this now, drop a comment where you're tuning in from. We're going to do some shout outs because you guys know we have the most international uh, LinkedIn Live uh, audience ever. I just made that up. I don't know if it's ever, but I, I would like to claim that title for myself. Okay, so here we go. We have got um, Crystal from Pennsylvania. Welcome, Crystal. We've got Stacy from Toronto, Canada. We've got Jeannie, Jeannie haters going to hate, right? Exactly. I'm just getting better at deflecting them every day. So um, we've got Jonathan's here from Arlington, Texas. Welcome. We've got uh, Vulcan from Turkey. Welcome, Vulcan. Um, we've got Hampshire, England. Um, welcome, Arthur. Oh, good to see you, Arthur. Awesome. So if you're just seeing this, please like this post. Share this post so that more people see it and drop a comment where you're tuning in from. I'll be doing shout outs as usual. We've got our niece from Atlanta, Georgia. We've got Ryan from Flemington, New Jersey. We've got um, Oliver from France. Here we go. It's always like the international people like come in a little later. Like I get a little like, I get a little self-conscious saying my crowd's so international when everyone from the US starts coming in. But um we do have some peeps from overseas, no doubt. And as usual, I appreciate you guys tuning in because I know it's late over there. Um, we've got uh, Hussein from Saudi Arabia. There we go. Jeremy from Wisconsin. Jeremy, we're going to have to call you up one of these days because you are like a very loyal, loyal fan on this show. I always, always see your comments. We've got Monique from Belize. We've got Michael Hahn from Arizona. And we've got... Uh, mm, your first name's not showing up there because you got the weird characters in it. Um, whoever this is, Van Nickirk from Panama. Just going to give you a quick little LinkedIn tip. Those fancy characters, be careful with them in your main name. You can use them in like posts and stuff, but it can mess with the search results on LinkedIn. So you might want to actually fix that. I literally can't even like read it right now because it's showing up black. So um, little, little tips for you guys. I'm going to keep throwing them in as I see them. We've got Joe from Cali, retired Navy veteran. Oh, own, own that, Joe. Way to go. Thank you for your service. And we've got some peeps from North Carolina. Thank you, Michael. Daniel. Okay, that's who it is, Daniel. Uh, we've got Navin from Nepal. First time here, Daniel. Welcome, welcome. Okay, amazing. James from Rhode Island. Awesome, you guys. We are going to get started. Um, oh, wait, one more. Louis from Dominican Republic's here. Where are all my like Swiss? Okay, here we go. England. Where are the Switzerland peeps and like the Russian peeps and like all the peeps from um, Europe? I don't see as many today. Well, nonetheless, we are going to get started. So if you're just joining, please like this post. And I am going to be bringing up to the stage a super powerhouse woman in the business world. She has an incredible story, which I'm really excited to dive into. Her name's Kara Golden, and she actually has a really beastie LinkedIn profile, which not a lot of people do. So we're definitely going to be diving into that a little bit because you guys know LinkedIn's my specialty. And we're going to be asking Kara all about her business and how she got into this world and also her book, Undaunted, which 
you guys know me, I love that title. Um, so be sure to um, bring your questions and everything. We're gonna be doing a little open interview and some Q and A. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Miss Kara Golden. Hello. Hello. I'm good. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. I'm so excited to be here, Shay. I'm I'm like mesmerized by all the people signing in and from all over the world. You are just total badass. I mean, oh, it's, it's thank amazing. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, you know, it's um a lot of it is thanks to this platform and thanks to LinkedIn. It's uh been where I've grown my influence and you know, it's just funny because um, I always wanted to be famous. You know, that was like my dream when I was a little girl. I wanted to be Britney Spears. Obviously, I think nobody wants to be Britney Spears anymore. So it's funny how that flipped. Uh, but I, I, I did. I always wanted to be famous. And then I ended up getting into business. Um, and I found LinkedIn and I started posting videos on LinkedIn. And I had had a background in video marketing. And it's like of all platforms to get famous on like i dreamed of linkedin ended up being the place and i'm so grateful for it because what other platform with this many educated people on it with money and with resources so i'm sure that you can relate so tell us uh before we dive in because i do want to ask about your linkedin tell us a little bit about how you started your company hint and um the story behind that and uh, anything that you would like to share about what you're up to today with that yeah. So, well, this is my product hint, actually. I've got the carbonated, the hint fizz here in Blackberry that I'm enjoying Yummy. at the moment. Uh, so I started the company almost, uh, well, just over, I should say, 16 years ago. And wow. I mean, which is crazy, right? It's uh, it's just goes to show you, I mean, to really build a brand, it takes a while, right? And I was not only launching a new uh, product and a new company, but also launching an entirely new category, which if you're interested, we can also um, get into that as well, because that's uh, something that um, that I definitely learned a ton about. But basically, I, I was a tech executive. Um, I Prior to launching Hint, I had launched a business inside of a larger company um, called America Online, and I ran the e-commerce and um, direct-to-consumer group um, within that, all of the partnerships, and uh, anyway, started it from zero and grew it into a billion dollars in revenue for AOL. And once it hit a billion dollars, I thought, okay, now what are we going to do? And I decided to take some time off. I had three kids under the age of four. Um, oh my gosh. I mean, it was crazy. You, them out. you waste no time. Kara. Wasted no time. And I thought I'm going to take a break and, you know, be a parent. And really, I lived in San Francisco at the time. And I thought I'm really, you know, going to enjoy um, that. And while I was being a parent, I think that's when I started really paying attention, frankly, to not only what I was putting in my kids' bodies, but also my own. I started, you know, really looking at what I was eating, what I was drinking, what lotions I was putting on, all of that kind of stuff. And and so ingredients just had never really kind of, I, it just never was a part of my life. I guess like I would want health healthy ingredients, but I just hadn't focused on it. And it wasn't until I really realized that I had gained a bunch of weight over the course of many years. My skin had developed terrible adult acne that I had never even had as a teenager. And my energy levels had really sunk that I thought, maybe it's something I'm eating. And I looked at all kinds of diets. Um, I looked at all kinds of you know food that I was eating, looked at calorie counting, which I had never done before, and then had almost given up when I looked down at my diet soda one day, my diet Coke in particular, that was my favorite friend next to my family. And, um, and I was, uh, and I realized what I was putting into my body. And I thought, huh, that's really interesting. Like I, you know, if it was food, I would test it and see whether or not it was, you know, something that was causing a problem. But um, why don't I just test it and see what happens? So I gave up my Diet Coke, and two and a half weeks later, my skin cleared, my energy levels came back, and I lost 24 pounds. In two and, weeks? In two and a half weeks. And so, oh and, 
And I had, you know, fr what was it about the diet drink that I always thought was really healthy? And I looked at these diet sweeteners and I, you know, at that time, diet drinks were like 10 calories. They hadn't perfected zero calories yet. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, what is it? What's going on in my system? And then I realized that I, first of all, I wasn't going to go back to drinking diet Coke or diet soda in general. Um, but I started drinking water because I was really thirsty. And then I thought, you know, I grew up in Arizona, as you and I were talking about. I should have been drinking a lot more water, but I wasn't. And the reason I wasn't drinking water was because it's boring. And it's I thought, so boring. Thank you for saying it. Thank you for saying it. Right? It's so and, boring. So, and so I thought, okay, how do I make water more interesting? And so I started slicing a fruit and any type of fruit. I would, friends would come over to my house and they're like, what kind of fruit do you have in your water? And I'd be like, oh, today it's pomegranate. T oh, tomorrow it's lemon, then it's lime. And, and so then I realized that this is what I should be drinking, but it's a hassle to go and buy all this fruit, slice it up every day. It goes bad in the refrigerator after a couple of days. And I'm just like, not to mention the fact that it was expensive after a yeah. while. And I thought the, for the convenience factor, which was really all about online shopping and and sort of what I had eating ha, had been breathing for so long that there has to be this product available in stores. And I went looking for the product. Whole Foods had just come into uh, the San Francisco area, and I thought this beautiful store. This is the perfect place to have a product like this, and it wasn't there. And I just at that point started asking questions and I'd never been in the beverage industry. I was amazed at how many healthy perception products were out there. Um, vitamin water was super hot. And I would ask my friends who were drinking vitamin water there. I was like, so what is it about water, vitamin water that you like? They'd say, oh, it tastes great. And I'd say, did you know it has 300 calories in it? This was before there was a diet version. They'd say, they're like, come on. How could it have 300 calories in it? Yeah. Because again, these words were tricking the consumer totally. into believing that it was healthier than it was. And totally. so just for kicks, I thought, you know, I want a water with just fruit in it. And before I go back and do it, my next tech job, I'm going to just launch this product and maybe no one will actually like it. And that's cool. I'll just have a lot in my pantry and all my friends when they come over. I didn't know about shelf life. I mean, I didn't know about a lot, but I just thought it'll just be really, really interesting to launch this. But in addition, the, my core back then for launching this product and my core to this day is I thought if I could do something with my life that helped people gain health, that just be, that's my mark, right? That is my legacy. And I thought, you know, that is what I want to be doing. And so that was the beginnings of Hint. Wow. That is such an incredible story. And, and true um, entrepreneurship, I think always is somebody, um, it, they, they themselves first experience it. Like I was unhealthy and then I found the solution and naturally you just want to share that with other people. You just want other people to experience the same thing. So I think that that's so amazing. I think there is a huge epidemic, you know, in this country, especially around just food and what we put in our bodies and people not understanding what's, what's really in uh, these products that are like literally killing us. And for the record, this is, this is not mine. This is John, my colleague over here. He drinks Diet Coke and, and we're working on that. But, you know, I myself uh, had a, had a, a rough history with, with health. I talk about it on my blog, my, my followers know I had asthma really bad and I saw all these Western doctors and, you know, they always told me it couldn't be cured. And Finally, uh, one day I just gave up and I said, screw this, you know, I'm going to go natural. I'm going to like, I was determined to heal it. And I did, I found naturopathy. I started dieting, cutting certain inflammatory foods out of my diet and um, have not used an inhaler in over four years. So I'm always telling people, you know, like you can heal, but you need to take control of your life 
first, and that's exactly what you did. So um, kudos to you. I'm sure it was not easy kicking Diet Coke. There was probably a little bit of withdrawal that you experienced in the beginning. Am I right? Totally. I mean, those, I, you know, share the story a lot that those two and a half weeks, I, I'm not going to lie, they were not the best. And, and I had headaches. I actually, I thought I had the flu. I had like the worst, you know, stomach issues during that time um, because I was truly going through withdrawals and I made it through. And it was like, it, it, it was at that point when I, I really saw, I mean, I was, I was a different person on, on wow. many, many levels yeah. and, you know, losing that much weight, first of all, I mean, it's just a lot in, in two and a half weeks. And then that continued throughout the year. Um, I mean, it was just crazy. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, a lot of people ask me too, especially, you know, in building the company and, and kind of, um, you know, what, kept you going. I mean, my subtitle of my book is, well, my book is called Undaunted Overcoming Doubts and Doubters, but, you know, not having experience, of course, I'm human. I, there were moments and days when I thought, what the heck am I doing? I mean, you know, like this is just, this is so hard. Um, but the, the first day that I got the product on the shelf at Whole Foods in San Francisco, we did something that again, I didn't even know um, you know, that I was doing something so unique, but the, the, um, in the tech industry, we always had some sort of communication with the customer so that there was always an email, sometimes a phone number that people could call. So when I launched a beverage, I thought, okay, I, I want to have, you know, that I want to have some sort of communication with the customer and, and kind of hear from them. So the first yep. day we, um, we heard from this gentleman who wrote to me and said, I absolutely love that you've launched this product. I've been looking for a water, a still water without uh, sweeteners in it, with just fruit in it. And um, I have this disease called type two diabetes. And I said, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm your customer service person. Don't tell them that it was actually the founder slash customer uh, service, right? Okay, so we all I, know we're there at one point. Yeah, I I call them up and I and I said, um, you know, that's really great. And I said, so talk to me about type two diabetes because 16 years ago I had never heard of type two diabetes. And he said, uh, you know, it's really strange. He was like, I run marathons. I'm, you know, eating. Um, low fat food. I'm, I'm doing all the right things. And I said, I'm familiar with, you know, type one diabetes. He said, no, no, no. I like developed this later on in life. And what I learned just by talking to him was something that frankly, I hear from consumers daily is that, you know, there are these challenges that people are going through health wise that they haven't been able to figure out because they've been following the rules, right? They've been eating, you know, the right way. They followed a lot of different diets. Never um, follow the rules. That's what Shay will tell you. Never yeah. Follow the rules. Yeah. <laughs> the, rules, these, the rules are wrong. <laughs> but these diet sweeteners for so many people. And, and frankly, I think I now, although I was never diagnosed with type two diabetes, I think I was probably something On that that path. called Pro, yeah, pre type yeah. two diabetes. And so I think a lot of the reason why I couldn't, you know, figure out like the weight issue, I had never connected the skin and the weight together. But mm -hmm. now it sounds like you have as well figured out the way your body works. And I think that my body was actually, you know, really, really, you know, struggling. And so it yeah. was, it was starting to come out on my skin. Yes. And so when I finally figured this out, and cleared my my body it was at that point when i was able to you know really get my health back be, and and really nip it in the butt before it became an issue but you know it's it's um it's it's amazing i mean 16 years ago i think it was one and a half percent of the population had type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes today it's like 40 to 45 percent in the u.s alone it's um the mm -hmm. fastest growing disease in the world yes. um and so and I in just, children too, right? And, like, and in really, children too. Yeah. But the but the scary thing is, is that you know the core for me was just thinking about how hard it is. I mean, life is hard as it is, and and why is it so hard for people to gain their health back? Why is it, you know, these words that people think are you know better for them, yet they aren't? And so 
that was really my my purpose and still is my purpose and you know call me an advocate for health today that that's how i look at it that's that's so incredible and you know um i think you were ahead of your time really as you said like these diseases are just becoming more and more prevalent i think you know this whole um situation with the pandemic and everything is quite literally a manifestation of us being at the breaking point of health you know like we we need to start actually taking our health seriously and stop treating it like just such a business you know um get to the root of healing which those of you on my story you can see earlier today i was just at a clinic that's all about that but i want to switch gears a little bit and talk about your marketing because it, it's first of all, it's fire. So if you guys aren't already, go click her name above on LinkedIn, go follow her on LinkedIn, but also her Instagram is popping. Um, I teach a lot about storytelling in, in my marketing. I teach a lot about like the importance of, you know, connecting with your audience through your story, where you come from, because people do business with people, not businesses. So mm -hmm. I'm very curious to hear from you. Um, do you know like about how many of your customers do you feel actually come through your story where they actually hear the thing about Diet Coke and they're like, oh, wait a minute, like that's me, like John over here, we're going to get him some hint. <laughs> so like how, how many of them are like just randomly finding you in the store, like, oh, I'll take some flavored water, whatever, or are like genuinely like, oh my gosh, if I hadn't heard your story, Kara, I would have never known about this water and, and it's changed my life. It's interesting and it's very hard to measure, frankly, but I think that, you know, going back to kind of the roots of, of the beginnings of Hint, it was, I talked about being, developing not just a company and a product, but also a category. So two months into getting it on the shelf at Whole Foods, and we were in probably nine other stores around the San Francisco Bay Area, what I learned was that I, I would you know, hand a bottle of Hint to the grocery buyer who was kind of like the gatekeeper, the de decision maker um, for letting us get on the shelf. And I'd say, hey, this is Hint. It's an unsweetened flavored water. And they'd say, oh, it tastes really good. So uh, is this like vitamin water? And I'd say, no, 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 no. Like vitamin water has a sweetener in it. This doesn't have any sweeteners in it. And they'd say, so who else is doing this? And I'm like, no one. That's what's so great. And they'd say, well, if you're the only one there, then it's not really a category. And we only work with categories. We only work with, you know, wow. things that have like co competition in it. You can't just be wow. the only one on the shelf. And I'm like, but I, that's ridiculous. I mean, how yeah. do I, I mean, I, I've launched this brand new thing. And so this is something I talk about a lot too, that no matter what industry you're in, um, competition is actually not such a bad thing because it actually shows that, you know, maybe it's a real thing, right? Especially if you've got right. a gatekeeper now, you know, direct to consumer kind of changed the playing field a little bit around, uh, around that whole issue. But so when I started thinking about that, I was still finding consumers. We were in Whole Foods, we were, you know, getting traction, but I started talking to the people not only in the store that I could find that were, you know, sort of looking at the bottle and trying to figure it out, but also at events. So I started asking people like that gentleman I mentioned to you, I'd, I'd say, so, you know, do you have, do you know other people who have type two diabetes? Do you, we've had, you know, breast cancer um, patients who have reached out to us. I'd say like, would you, where do you find strength? Where do you go to like find your communities? And they would share with me, oh, well, I've done this fun run. I've done this, whatever. So I would go to those events and bring our field marketing team, we call them, to these events 16 years ago. And we would try and sample at these events. I mean, we have a water. And so we would try and, you know, people who had interest in that topic, we would find those people. And at those events, what I found, people would, you know, ask us like, oh, first of all, what is this product? They would taste it. But then they would also, you know, ask why I developed the product. And so those people who, first of all, I think they wouldn't have paid attention to the product if it wasn't good. Right. I always share this with entrepreneurs that you have to lead with a great product. But the, the journey is that after they like what you're doing, 
your product, then they want to hear the backstory. They want to get more tied to it and more emotional. And so we got a lot of trial this way. Um, and more and more, we were having people from a lot of these different communities go into stores saying, oh, do you have hint? Then we went into Google. And so we became the largest beverage in Silicon Valley to Google and Facebook and lots of other companies. And it's funny because still to this day, people who tried it at a lot of the tech companies didn't know. They knew that it was a San Francisco brand. They didn't necessarily know that it was a former tech executive. It was, you know, Kara's story of sort of why she did it. But when they would run into that story, then it's it's interesting because then they would share their story and yes. they would talk about how they got it, um, how they used to drink a ton of Diet Coke or Diet Dr. Pepper. And then they had some health issues that they were trying to change. And I mean, this happens to me, Shay, on airplanes all the time. People wow. who are traveling with me start laughing because they're like, you can't even get up to go to the bathroom because people, you'll have like a hint sweatshirt on and people will walk up and they'll share these stories and, you know, about their connection to the product, which is fascinating. That is, that, so, is, that is branding done so, well, ladies and gentlemen. I think it came really organically, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It wasn't an intentional, let me go tell my story so that I'm going to build this brand, but that's the way people remembered it. Mm -hmm. And and I think another thing that came up, I'll tell you a really funny story uh, about, I guess it was two years into building the brand. Um, there used to be the show on CNBC called How I Made My Millions, which is more like how I spent my millions. For, and they reached out and they said, hey, I, I'd love for you. I'd, we'd love to interview you for this like two minute segment. They came and spent all day with me. They were following me around and filming all the stuff. And then the two minute segment, they said, it's doing really well. We're going to expand it to 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Then it expanded to 22 minutes. It was like the Kara hour at this point. Wow, it was crazy. Yes. And it was the number one program on how I made my millions. I mean, it was, it was wow. insane. And, and the thing, I mean, you know, it was, it was insane. And we weren't even nationwide. We were only in the Bay Area with our product. I mean, it was, you know, direct to consumer wasn't happening yet. I mean, it was just, it was really, really early. But the interesting thing was, was that I would hear from people through LinkedIn. They would come in and they would, you know, share that their story was somehow connected to my story. And they really remembered it. And one time I was uh, traveling with my family. And I, I was sitting by the pool and I had a few bottles of Hint. And this lady said to me, uh, she came up to me and told me that she had seen this story on CNBC and, and she wanted to know where I got those bottles. And I said, oh, just down the road at the store. And she said, uh, oh, and she told me my story. She didn't recognize me. And That's she, hilarious. I love and, that. Which was hysterical. And at the end, um, you know, my daughter was there and she said, you know, mom, did you tell her that, you know, you're the founder? And I said, I, I actually, um, I, I work for the company and she didn't hear my daughter say the founder. And she said, oh, what's that lady like? And it was, I mean, it was so funny. Wow. And, and I, I should take notes. You can learn a lot. I see. I'm, I would just be like, it's me right away. I would be like, I'm the, you know what I mean? I wouldn't be as humble as you. So that's super interesting. What did she say? Well, she just, and she was, she was like, you know, she's like, no way. Like what you were, you work with that lady, what she like. And uh, I was like, I don't know. She's pretty cool. I mean, she's pretty, you know, whatever. You and, still didn't and, say it was you. Oh my gosh. I still didn't say. It. And then later on we saw her at dinner and, and uh, she, and she came up and, I talked to my husband and and then he didn't sort of know what the whole conversation was. And he was, he uh, said, uh, you know, yeah, she's the CEO of the company. And then, and then it all came out. But the point wow. is, is that I think more than anything, people like to make, I think people, people remember stories to your point. But what I find is that people also connect, make the connections. And sometimes the connections are not necessarily um, you know, your story, but 
you know, for example, the number of people that I have run into that have said to me, just like you, Kara, I had type two diabetes. I didn't have type two diabetes, but I, I was close. Right. But, but again, they start to bring it all together. Or I also had, I was pregnant with my fourth when I decided to launch this company at, at Whole Foods. And so the number of people who, when they're describing the story of Hint, will lead with the fact that, you know, a mother of four kids, she, you know, launched a company while she was pregnant. Most of those people have some kind of crazy story like that in their life that they're, you know, associating. So right. the associations, I think, are really, really powerful. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I, I I would agree with that. I think whenever I post anything that's just true to me and something that I believe in, um, it doesn't actually have to be related to what I sell. It, right. it, it just gets business because anyone who relates to it is suddenly like, oh, this Shea woman, she gets me and I have a similar story. And wait a minute, what does she do? Video marketing. And then they're like, I need video marketing. And then like, you know, there's a reason people are coming to me and not all the other video marketers who, let's be real, are a dime a dozen at this point on social media. Um, I always say people buy from people who believe in things, who take a stand. And you did that with your own health journey. You said, you know, I believe in this fruit water. I believe in, you know, not no need for added sugars, no need for all this stuff that they're pumping into these health drinks. Um, and I'm gonna create my own. And I just think that's so, so beautiful. So we're gonna get to questions in a little bit. If we got some questions, you boys let me know. But I wanna switch gears and I wanna ask the question we've all been waiting for. Actually, just to Shay, Shay has really been waiting for it, but ho hopefully other people have been waiting for it. Um, how'd you grow your LinkedIn? You know, I, I, um, not an influencer badge. That's like real, that's real boss stuff right there. That's a real boss stuff. They don't even give that out anymore. I know, <laughs> you know, I, I think just look, I think more than anything, um, it was, it was growing it through the stories, right. And growing it through and, and sharing, um, not only how I, I'm growing the brand, but was it, how early, was it early on? Like you mentioned 16 years ago, was it like back in the day, there was less people on LinkedIn, you were doing, I mean, there were definitely less people on LinkedIn. Um, but it was, um, it was always a place where I felt like, I mean, frankly, it was kind of, I, I felt like even before Facebook, I mean, before you could even storytell on there and it's a different, obviously, you know, it's a different type of platform, mm -hmm. but it was also, you know, a place where I found that I would get, have this business community. I think another thing that, you know, I talk about in the book too, is being an entrepreneur is, um, you know, it can be lonely. I mean, especially as you're starting to build a company, I had been in larger companies and felt like, you know, I had a network right inside right. of these other companies. And so I started to go out and use LinkedIn really as a tool to um, to start to learn more like, what do you think about this? And, and where would I find this kind of stuff? And so the more um, I started to do that, I felt like there was just a lot more engagement. So it was super organic how it grew and and um, and what and what year was that? Like about what year range? Because you have over two hundred forty thousand followers. You got the the badge, which I know they haven't given out for like a few years now. They stopped doing that. So what would you say? What was like your trajectory of growth? Like when did you gain the most followers on LinkedIn? That's a good question. I don't. It was probably about five. I don't know. I've been. It's been growing a lot l lately. I. You know. I don't really watch it as much as I yeah. do, like I just enjoy it. I think that the main thing is, is even if you have, what I always share with people is, even if you have a team of people that is helping you, you still have to be on there. And it's so noticeable um, if you're not. You know, you can't yeah, just, I, I agree. I do, the, and, I do the same, yeah. But I also think that the other thing that people are really challenged by is growing the, you know, being a, uh, you know, female CEO and female founder that there are questions that people have along the way about, right. you know, their own fears and about, you know, maybe I could go do that, but I'm not as fearless as you and I'm not as, um, 
you know, how do you go do it? How do you go ask a person, you know, to go get a bottle on the shelf at Whole Foods? I mean, you know, it sounds crazy, but when that's something that you're sort of thinking about, you know, leaving your job, right. And going and starting something new, it's, it's daunting, right. It's really really scary. And so seeking people out that have done that, is is definitely um you know it's what people are looking for and um and i think that there are there are so many c-suite executives frankly that do not use social in the same way to sort of give back that you know i not only learn from other people but i feel like it it's a place where i can kind of give back and and hopefully in masses versus actually being able to spend one-on-one time with people. Well, you do that. You know, I think you're a shining example of just giving back, just providing value without asking for anything. Hey, here's my story. This is how I improved my life, you know, take it or leave it. And just really having faith that, you know, the right customers will find you. That's a huge part of what I also teach um, in my program. So I think that's amazing. So it was really connected with people back then because, you know, video, I see you're doing the videos, you got videos on Instagram and all this. Um, but video is still fairly new on LinkedIn. It came out like three or four years ago. So you were really growing with like the text posts, like a picture, maybe a picture of you on the job or something relevant to your brand. And then the copy associated was just something very um, human and very, you know, uh, connecting with the audience and, and, and sharing value in that way. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, it, you know, video has only, you know, recently kind of come into play, and you know, I think it helps having a book because there was a lot yes. more, you know, frankly, for, um, you know, to kind of go in and talk about, especially, you know, chapter by chapter. So I had been writing for the last five years too, and a lot of the stuff that, I mean. The, the book came out of my journal, which was five years in the making, and um, it was over 600 pages, the journal. And so a lot of what I also did with my um, LinkedIn and other platforms was kind of test the stuff that I should keep in the book versus actually, you know, cut. Even though right. they were great stories, I started to see how people engaged in right. that you gotta content. Right, follow, follow the data. Right. And following the data. And so, you know, when I started to look at working with my editor on cutting some things, I would bring some of those stories on and I'd say, look at the response, look at the engagement. Um, So, you know, using social as a tool to kind of figure stuff out that you're, you know, sort of stumped by, or maybe you're, you know, you're challenged by some member of your team um, that says, no, I don't think so. Well, let's, let's figure out a way to post about this and actually see whether or not, you know, it gets engaged. Right. Or not. right. And it's always those posts that people are the most afraid of that are, they're the most, oh, it's too risky. Oh, it's too vulnerable. Like those are the posts that you need to post, you know, what, what is the most personal is the most general. So when you feel scared, that's actually a sign you should do it. And that's a lot of what I teach people here on LinkedIn, especially in the business world, there's this misconception that you gotta be perfect, that you you know, you know can't really just open up and, and expose it all because you're gonna lose business. I think it's nonsense. You know, I think the reason I've grown so much is because I've really broken through a lot of that shame and I teach other people how to do it. But we're gonna switch gears again, ladies and gentlemen, because I do wanna get to the book, but I do have one more question you touched on it briefly, but we kind of skid over it. I want to just backpedal a little bit. So you mentioned like uh, something about being a woman in business specifically, a woman entrepreneur and people coming to you for advice. What are your thoughts on that? You know, cause I, I have, you know, pretty interesting thoughts about the whole, like, you know, women in business thing and like, Oh, you know, it, it's, is it, is it, so much harder being a woman? Are we really disadvantaged? What's the experience here? And I know that you come from a different generation as I do. So perhaps your lens is different than mine. Um, So I I just want to ask you, what does that mean to you to be a woman in business? And can you talk about that a little bit and anything that you would like to share? Look, the data is clear, right? There was a, there was a piece that was, it was, 
issued in Fortune magazine uh, talked about it this morning that women are making 30% less than men in you know many many C-suite roles and and so there's there's lots of stuff like that out there but to your point people have asked me over the years things like was it harder to raise money as a woman and frankly I've never been a man so um, there are roles like raising money that have me, me, um, me neither me neither Kara despite despite some right. Spe- Despite and, some speculations on my page, honestly, but yeah, right? so I've always and, been a woman, yeah. And so I don't know. I don't. And and what I always share with people is, does it really matter at the yeah. end of the day? Because right. I'm a huge believer that if you really want to go do something, then you just have to figure out how to go and get it done. And so, I mean, that's a lot of what I talk about even you know, in my messaging and and social too. And it doesn't, and, you know, it's a lot of what I talk about parenting too. It's like, look, you know, you have to figure out if it's right for you. I don't think every single parent should be working. I mean, but I don't think it's, there's something, anything wrong with it either. I think more than anything, I want people, I think what people should do is figure out what they love doing. I completely agree. Yeah. Right. And, and I think that that's the most important thing. And, and another message that I give to, you know, so many people who reach out to me on these topics is that, you know, sometimes raising money will take longer. Sometimes building a company will take longer if you have multiple things going on in your life. And it's okay, despite the fact that so many people say, you know, be the first, hurry, all of this message messaging around, you know, like got to go fast and hustle and all of that. The the reality is, is that it, it's sometimes okay to slow down. That doesn't mean stop. Mm. That means, right. Because complacency, I, I'm a huge mm-hmm. believer, yeah. will kill you, but, yeah. but that doesn't mean that you can't slow down and, you know, take a little bit longer to do things. And, and, you know, if you, want to have a family while you're building a company, it's totally possible. Um, But it also, if you want some kind of balance, I mean, that's another thing that comes up a lot. Like, how do you stay balanced? I'm like, Uh, on the day, I'm not balanced, right? Right. I mean, if it's a crazy day, then there's a lot going on. I'm sure, Shay, you appreciate this too. I mean, you know, if there's- I appreciate crazy, like no one you've ever met probably. So yes. Right. And so to say like, oh, I'm looking for balance. It's just, it, it just depends on what the day is. Hopefully most of your days are balanced, but not right. every day is going to be balanced. And I especially if you're busy. Just and- surrender to it, accept it as the reality that it's not- you're never, you're never going to have that perfect, balanced, tightly um, set schedule because when you put that expectation on yourself that it should be that way, you'll be perpetually disappointed on all the days oh, that way. things come up. Yeah, I I agree, and I think that you know it's it's still. I mean, look, I my kids are older now, but I think especially being a parent and you know, trying to manage during a pandemic when schools are closed. I mean, that was, that was like hard. I mean, I had a lot of employees. I never never in my life was so grateful for not having kids. Right. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. And, and unfortunately the women, you know, even when there's great fathers around and there's a lot of them, I mean, the women had to, you know, they felt the brunt of a lot of that. I mean, many women, quit their jobs because they didn't know how to deal right. with zoom calls and, you know, and while their husbands oh, wow, and, yeah. and so, and, and so there's a lot of stuff that has happened, you know, t- that I think are real issues for women and we can't walk away from those things. But having said that, we have to figure out a way to make it happen and, and allow us to achieve what we want to achieve. I agree. I completely agree. And lifting each other up is a big one. You know, you hear a lot of women on LinkedIn who've who've worked in corporate. Um, I am fortunate that I never really worked. I never worked corporate. I never even really worked a job. I went like from waitressing to digital marketing. So I didn't ever experience this. But something you hear a lot from women on LinkedIn is, oh, Shay, you know, in the corporate world, a lot of women, they, they compete with one another. 
you know, they're kind of conditioned to believe there's only room for one woman. And therefore, instead of lifting each other up, women are kind of conditioned to like hate one another. And it can be very toxic. And I think we're just now entering a phase um, in history where we're realizing that and we're realizing, wait, we can help one another and we can lift one another up. And there's all these groups for women now and entrepreneurial circles just for women and mothers even now. And I, I just think that's, that's so beautiful. So thank you for sharing. We do have a question. Wayne Gabriel wants to know, let's see, drop your questions. You guys, we got one from Wayne here. Where do you want to be in 10 years? Ooh, that's a long time, both professionally um, and personally, as I'm guessing what he meant there. <laughs> professionally and professionally is what he wrote. But yeah, what where, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think being in, a, being in a role where I feel like I'm helping people, I think it would be very, very difficult, whether it's, um, you know, my I have no plans to leave Hint. Um, I've been the CEO for the last 16 years. Uh, but um, I think more than anything, having a direct connection to the consumer um, and also feeling like I'm helping. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. Those, those emails and, and those direct messages that come in through social and people saying like, I needed to hear those words. I needed to drink this product. I mean, it may sound crazy to somebody who hasn't sort of, you know, doesn't need um, to drink unsweetened flavored water doesn't need to, you know, hear messages of imp inspiration. But when you see the number of people that are touched by that and who frankly really need to be lifted, um, I don't think I could ever not be in that sort of role. I would need to. Um, and, and I think that that's the thing. I mean, so many people have asked me, did you hate tech? It's very male dominated. No, not really. I mean, I there were definitely days that you know, weren't awesome. But I think for the most part, what I really, really missed is as much as technology and tech, you feel like it, you would have that connection with the consumer. I really just didn't have, that was still a few steps away from the consumer. And, and I think for me, when I finally felt like I was actually doing something to better people and, and really help them, I thought, I, I will always do that. And many people get that through, you know, work volunteering or working at a nonprofit. Uh, right. But for me, I had never done that in a job. And I, mm -hmm. and I, that's, you know, what gets me up in the morning and makes me know that people are depending on me to, you know, really help them in some yeah. way. So. It's your life mission. And that kind of actually ties into this next question here. So Keegan wants to know, did the career resume just, turn into the life resume or has there been any distinction between the two for you, as you said, doing this 16 years now? So when I started really hearing, uh, you know, from consumers that, you know, this product was helping them, I, I think that that for me really made me obviously, you know, think that's what I'm going to do for my life. But it was, it wasn't until a few years ago when we started coming out with other products that I really thought, how else can we help? So we came out with a, a sunscreen and, and Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sunscreen. yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, I'm a Miami girl, so, you know, I need it. <laughs> it's uh, And, you know, it's a great, it's a great product and um, it's, it's online. I mean, we're not really available in stores because we just haven't really gotten that far because it's been so crazy and our focus has really been on the water. But again, producing great products that help people get healthy and stay healthy um, are really, you know, that's how we think about, um, you know, the life journey. So in terms of a career, you know, I, I think more than anything, when I think about, and, and kind of counsel people uh, along the way too on what do you want to do? Um, I, I, I think where, where we miss is that we, we tell people, you talked about corporate roles. I, we tell people like you get in, you become, you know, you do a few years, you become a manager, you become a director, you be, you know, maybe you make it to, you know, being a CEO of a company, but the, the real key about all of that is the higher you go in organizations, the you stop, most executives stop learning. And so, so often, you know, I hear about burnout and, you know, people thinking, you know, they're doing a lot of mentoring, but they're not really learning. And it really 
is something that I really push on, um, you know, especially for friends of mine in like C-suite executive roles. It's like when I ask them if they're learning, they're like, what do you mean? Which is just scary, right? That, that they stop learning along the way because the more senior you become, your job is to teach other people and to mentor other people, which is fine. But when you stop learning, that's where I think that you miss on kind of the happiness and being able to, and, and I think for me, I didn't realize it so much when I was leaving tech. I was the youngest vice president at America Online. I was one of the you know, few women at sort of that level. And, and what I felt was that the more people that I had in my group, the more that I was making sure that, that they were learning and they were happy, but mm -hmm. I wasn't learning as much. Right. And I think that that's, that that's really something that, you know, is, is a career and a life thing that I think is the most important thing. And, and so often too, you know, when you go from, I came from tech and went into beverage. I mean, when I walked into beverage, I thought there's a lot here that is so messed up, everything about the sweeteners and the words and all this stuff. But all of a sudden I became a student, right? I was not the smartest person in the room and the most knowledgeable person in the room anymore. I was in there learning. And so I was, and because I didn't come from that industry, I was able to ask a lot of questions. Now, so many times people would say to me, oh, you know, you're launching a beverage. Did you work for Coke or Pepsi? I'm like, I did not. And they said, yeah. oh, what did you do before? I'm like, oh, I was in tech. And they're like, okay, well, that's irrelevant. So what do you want to know? And sometimes people wouldn't even get that far. They'd be like, oh, she's never going to make it. She's going to fail. But then, uh, but it allowed me coming from a different industry and being curious and being inquisitive mm -hmm. to go and ask a lot of questions. Yes. Yeah. And that's where my happy place was because nobody expected me to be teaching and learning. Everybody expected me instead. I just had to find the people that would help me, you know, to learn. I guess Amazing. Is and I love that you just said that about all the doubters, the people saying, you know, well, you never worked for a big uh, beverage company. How are you going to do this? How are you going to, and, and all these naysayers, you know, I myself have experienced a lot of, of similarities in my career and with what I built. And that segues perfectly into our very last topic, which is the title of your book, which is literally titled Undaunted. So tell us about the book. Um, I think I don't even need to ask why the title, because I think you've just shared the experience of just basically being undaunted by other people's um, experiences, you know, not taking on their projections and their fears as truth and knowing in your heart, no, I mean, I know it's rare. I know not a lot of people have done it. I know a lot of people believe you can't do it, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to push forward regardless, undaunted um, by these experiences and these uh, perspectives around me. So tell us about the book, uh, anything that you would like to share based on what I just um, segued into. Yeah. So, well, if you want to start a food or beverage company, it's the perfect book to go and and uh, learn a lot from. But even more so, I think that the book is really about being human and about how we all have fears. We all have failures and challenges, even though, you know, Shay is is just awesome. I'm sure she had some challenges along the way. Right. Yeah, we yeah, all do. Too. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. And and I certainly did, too. And I think that the more that you can that the what I find is that, look, people used to say to me all the time to, you know, forget about the past. Right. And I've always believed that you can actually learn a lot from the past. It's right. not that you it's it's not you you really shouldn't forget about those challenging times because right. that's where you're going to learn in order to you know propel it forward. And a lot of people are a lot of people are just saying that because they don't want to deal with their past. They're like, oh, forget right. about it. It's actually just like repression. It's not it's not like they've healed from it, you know. Right. So I've always been you know this person that is kind of I don't know maybe kind of counter that I've I, I've always been you know sort of thinking well is that true along the way. And then also what I realized in, in 
you know, and starting Hint and, and, you know, building an incredible team and, and, you know, running into all kinds of, you know, challenges along the way and building it was that people could actually learn a lot from my story. And yeah. the more that I shared with people, um, a lot, of, many of these stories along the way were things that, look, when I was in it, I didn't know what was going on, right? They were scary. I had a lot of fears. But then when I got out of those areas, and a lot of times, you know, those, this would come up when I was out public speaking over the last few years. And there's that Q&A session at the end when people would ask. And I felt like the, rather than just saying yes or no to something, I would, I would say no. And here's why. And I would share the story with people. And the way to connect people is to share the story of why you think that way. And, and that was the thing that I found was the most powerful. And then again, through social media, people would, he people would he be in the audience and then they would reach out to me and they'd say, I was in the audience. I heard your story. You have no idea how that helped me to know that I can go do something. And so when I finally thought about I didn't even think about writing a book, Shay. What I did, I reached out to a friend of mine who's an author and I said, how do you think I can like bind my journal and get it out to people? Because there's many people who don't go to the, the you know, conferences that I go to or the private speaking events where I'm speaking to, you know, internal audiences. And if I can actually get this out there, then I can help a lot of people. And she said, you mean write a book? I'm like, uh, oh, no, yeah. that's so scary. I don't have time. I'm a CEO of a company. How could I write a book? And she said, you have a journal of 600 pages. Like the hardest yeah. thing for you to do is to like get it, whittle it down. And so, so that is how it came to be. But again, it really yeah. led with helping people more than anything else. That was, you know, the, yeah. the core. The and core that's method. beautiful. And that's, that's what, you know, uh, Success at its core really is, I think, is just a, a genuine love for helping people, a genuine care for others to succeed in the ways that we have. So this has been an amazing hour. Thank you, everyone who tuned in. Uh, thank you, Kara. Uh, last final minute here, if you could just share with the audience um, where they can uh, follow you, where they can learn more, and where they can get your amazing book, Undaunted. Thank you. Well, all over social, LinkedIn, Golden, Kara Golden with an I, uh, but also it's available worldwide uh, at Audible and also at Amazon. So um, hopefully you guys will get a chance to read it. And I'd love to hear from you as well. And thank you so much, Shay. This is so fun that you Absolutely. connected. Yes, I'm so glad that we got connected. And thank you again for the book. Uh, Kara actually sent me a little care package or Kara package is what we should really be calling I it. I know, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I, 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 would, I would normally be repping the water right now, but I won't lie, I drink all of them. <laughs> I Yay. love them so much. I'm going to order more. So thank you so much for the water. And thank you everyone who tuned in. And um, we will see you all on the next episode of Today with Shay.